the model uncertainty with two different probability distributions in the third part of lesson eight. We had probability distribution of economic conditions, and then we had the probability distribution for uncertainty related to FDA approval or rejection of a drug that this company was launching. So we've really done a good job, I think, of understanding how uncertainty affects business decisions. Now we want to bring in risk. And quantitatively, the standard deviation is a great way of understanding risk. If a stock is going up and down a lot, but it's on an upward trajectory, it can have the same average percent increase day to day as a stock with very low uh, volatility on the same upward trend. They'll have the same expected percent increase daily, but one will have a massive standard deviation and one will have a small standard deviation. The one of the big standard deviation has more risk. So the standard deviation gives you an idea of consistency. The bigger the standard deviation, the more inconsistent that process is. You can look at it in terms of finance, in the financial world, the more risk that you'll be taking on. So that's what we're gonna do in here, in this problem. Now I've already copied the data in this table to my Excel worksheet. And the worksheet is named L1 because it's the first part of lesson nine. And I've saved it in lesson underscore unit nine underscore last name. My last name being Snar, right? Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to calculate the expected cost of importing. Now, E stands for the expected cost. If I type equal average, and then I just highlight above, I'm going to get an average based on an assumption that each of these six outcomes is equally likely to occur. This average is incorrect because these events, these six events are not equally likely to occur. Some are more likely to occur than others. And for that reason, we need to give those values more weight. The value that should be given the most weight has the highest probability. These three events are identical to th these three events with this one exception. These three events involve a hostile revolution with a trading ally. These three events are associated with a stable trading ally. So when there's a hostile revolution with a trading ally, the prices that we expect to pay are gonna be a lot higher than otherwise. Domestically, you might see a, a general increase. So these right here, this average is, let me pull it up down here. This straight up average, which is incorrect, is almost 70. And these three average to 52. The effect of this hostile revolution jacks up prices in our trading ally and raises prices generally domestically. So we got to account for that risk. And the way we account for it is we use a weighted average. And the way to calculate a weighted average is we have to multiply the probability times this observation, the value of the observation. We have to do that for all six of these. We have to calculate these products and we sum those products. And when we sum those products, we get a weighted average. So this is the incorrect average. It's the incorrect average because it's it's weighting this one and six. 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 That's not the case here, right? So we need to delete this and type equal sum product. Some product, again, is going to take each of these prices and multiply them by the corresponding probabilities, which results in a weighted average that is maybe close to the straight-up average, right? 
Now, if I drag this across, this red box will slide to the right. I wanna freeze the probabilities in column B. And the way I do that is put a dollar sign in front of the B. And then I can drag it across. Now notice my averages, my expected values are both the same. What to do? If we were just looking at averages, we'd be indifferent. We'd maybe toss a coin. The expected values are both 5485. I think most decisions are made at the average, right? People compare averages and they go with the, the lowest average cost or they go with the highest average revenue or they go with the highest average free throw shooter or they go with the lowest average golfer. Low golf average means better. Higher golf average means worse, right? So people look at these averages. What happens when the averages are the same? Well, you had to bring something else in. You, you notice here that 53 to 89 and then 40, there's a lot of variation here, right? Whereas it looks like these are relatively close with the exception of this last one. So maybe there's less variation here, right? We're not going to know until we calculate the weighted standard deviation. Now, the unweighted standard deviation is found by doing this equal stdev dot s. And it says importing the product is more risky than sourcing the batteries domestically. These right here are based on each of these events being equally likely. That is not the case, right? So what we have to do is we have to calculate the weighted standard deviation. And the way you calculate the weighted standard deviation is you take the observed value and you subtract off the weighted expected value. Now, when I drag this down, I want this red box to be frozen in row eight. So I'm gonna put a dollar sign in front of the eight. Then I can drag it down. These are the deviations in the mean. And notice the lower prices the situation in which there is no violent revolution in the trading alley, these prices are all below what we expect. These prices are all above what we expect. So this price is $1.59 below this expected value. This one is almost $10 below the expected value. This one is about 60 cents less than the expected value. This one is about $34.44 above the expected value. This one is almost $25 above the expected value. And this one is just over $33 above expected, right? Then we want to do the same thing for sourcing domestically. We want to subtract the price domestically for this particular event with its expected value. And we want to freeze the expected value in row eight. The largest one is the last one. If there's a rapid economic expansion and our trading ally suffers from a hostile revolution, there's this huge spike domestically in the price. This price is $43.79 greater than average. These are pretty close to that average. So their deviations from their expected values are you know, not too large. To get the variance, there's a couple ways we could go. We could square each of these and then sum those squares. If I type E2 to E7, and then I replicate that, E2 to E7, that squares and sums those values. The third column is the probabilities. So what this is going to do is going to take E2 times E2 times B2. So it's squaring this and then multiplying by that. And then it repeats that all the way down to E7. So E7 times E7. So this is going to be squared. Then we're going to multiply it by that probability. And it replicates that for all the rows in between.
this is going to give me the weighted variance of import prices. When I take the square root of that, I get the weighted standard deviation, which is 13.4. Now, because I'm going to drag this across, I'm going to drag it from E to F, I need to freeze again my probabilities. So when I drag this across, what I get here is I'm multiplying F2 by F2, and then I'm multiplying that by B2. I'm multiplying this by itself, and then multiplying by this probability. I do that for this row, this row, this row, this row. In the seventh row, I multiply F7, 43.79, by F7, 43.79. So this times that is 43.79 squared. And then I multiply by the probability. So that right there is the weighted variance of domestic prices. And then I can just drag this across to get the standard deviation. I'm going to move these over here. These are the weighted standard deviations. Although the average prices are identical for importing versus sourcing domestically, importing is more risky than sourcing domestically. Finally, I have to calculate the correlation. The unweighted correlation is found by just doing this. We have this column of prices and we have this column of prices. And it's 0.53. This is the incorrect correlation. The correct correlation is found by doing this. I could pull this across. I can move the blue box to column E and I can move the red box to column F. And so what this is doing, it's multiplying the deviation of the mean in E2 by the deviation from the mean in F2 and then multiplying by the probability in B2. And then it replicates that all the way down to the bottom where it's multiplying this deviation from its mean in E7 by this deviation from its mean in F7, and then multiplying by the probability. And again, that gives me, this gives me the weighted covariance. Weighted correlation equals that divided by the product, I have a parentheses there, the product of standard deviations. And when I press enter, I'm gonna get something kind of close, not exact. This is the unweighted correlation, and this is the weighted correlation. And because these are not equally likely events, I needed to use the weighted correlation. Our weighted standard deviations and our weighted correlation. Assuming the company seeks to minimize the expected unit cost of sourcing its needed laptop batteries, the company should do what? Well, with the expected values being the same, these two standard deviations suggest that importing is more risky. So the company should domestically source the batteries because there is more risk to importing but the expected cost of importing is equal to the expected cost of domestically sourcing.